Six Nations. Um, does this one feel any different to the nine that have come before? I get excited uh, every time I get an opportunity to represent Scotland. I think for me, um, as you say, it is my tenth, but I still get the same excitement as I did in my very first game. So um, now I'm very much looking forward to the opportunity to represent the team again. Um, and the boys will be feeling in a very good place at the minute. Some of those campaigns have, have started slowly and, and picked up. Some of them have been, you know, the opposite and, and some have not quite caught fire. Um, what makes you think Scotland are now in a position to, to put it all together in one campaign? I think the good thing for us is we have a lot of experience within the squad now that have been there um, through tough times, been there through the good times as well. And we've got a lot of exciting young talent coming through that have, have kept all the boys on their toes, I think. The beauty of this is that we can't change anything that's happened in the, in the past. We're very much in control of what we can do in the future. Um, so it's pointless for us looking back. Yes, we can take a lot of, it, of experience from it, um, but we're ready to, to move on and, and, and start a new, a new chapter. Good luck, Stuart. Thank you. Stuart, across a lot of professional leagues in, in rugby and, and football and other sports, we've seen a lot, of, a lot more away wins as a result of we imagine just because there's not any fans in there, home advantage is, is lessened. Does that give you extra hope going to Twickenham that you can kind of banish this 38 years run? And do you think it could make for quite an unpredictable Six Nations tournament? I think for anyone um, involved in professional sport, you know, we'd, we'd love to have the fans back in, but look, um, that's just not going to be the case. So, you know, for us, we're, we're very much concentrating on ourselves. I think if we look, you know, too far far ahead or concentrate too much on opposition then we're going to um, become unstuck so we've had a good couple of weeks together we feel we're, we're making good progress over the last year or so um, and we're hoping to continue um, you know for us yes it could be uh, it will be a lot different when the trick around without uh, you know the 80,000 fans there but um, there's 23 Scotsmen we can go down there and do a job and that's all we're concentrating on The team has got a lot of plaudits for the the defence over the last year, the, the record speaks for itself, but, but Gregor was, was very clear yesterday that he wants the attack to come on now and that is going to be a focus for the year. How exciting a prospect is that about, about getting that attack really firing now? Yeah, it's huge for us, but look, for us to be able to get ball to attack with, we have to defend first and foremost and you know, that's something that the boys have taken a huge amount of confidence going into the game with is that we feel over the last kind of year or so since Steve Tandis came on board, we are making huge progress and we're enjoying each other's company. We're enjoying the challenges that come with defending them. Um, and we are making improvements. In terms of our attack, I think if we can just, you know, kind of dot the I's and cross the T's, we'll, we'll be in a very good place. We feel that the game's always changing. There are, there are opportunities to, to play. Um, you are going to come up against solid defences. That's just the game. But we've got some um, exciting talent within the squad that can break down defences. We've got a game plan there that we believe can um, open up you know, huge opportunities for us. Um, so for us, it's all about the kind of first 20 minutes, making sure we bat it offensively and, and get a feel for the ball and attack. And if we do that, I believe we'll grow in confidence as the game goes on. Cheers, good luck. Yeah, would you like to follow Yeah. Um, Eddie Jones has talked this week about the expectation of this game, how it's one of the biggest that you'll play and that expectation is quite heavy on you all. What do you make of that? Is that the case? I think for us, it's another opportunity to represent Scotland, another chance to create our own little bit of history. And um, you know, as I say, we, we feel we've prepped well, we feel we're in a good place, but that counts for nothing unless we turn up tomorrow. So, you know, like it is the 150th game, um, 150th year of the game. And uh, you know, it's uh, going to be a special occasion, um, but one that hopefully we can, we can create our own little bit of history of. Johnny Hill seemed a, a bit miffed. He didn't have a text from you. Uh, he said that, that you and Johnny Gray, you know, like to keep yourself to yourself. You get a bit edgy, a bit tetchy towards the end and towards game week. Um, he, uh, he told us a few secrets as well. OC Dean, he likes to um, empty your bag upside down and move things just to make you cross. Have, have you got anything to say to him before the game tomorrow? Well, that's absolutely brilliant because he said uh, that it wasn't him that done that. Um, that <laughs> happens on a daily basis. I like to try and keep my keep my place in the changing room neat and tidy. And um, you know, I always used to I always come in from training and there's something being moved. You know, I'm, 
uh, a sucker for detail and uh, attention to detail. So, uh, yeah, it's good that he's now finally admitted it. Um, he's trying to rattle me, but, uh, yeah, I think I'll try and get him back for that due, uh, in due course. He, he did say, you know, every player sort of deals with it differently and you deal with it in that way. And he was so laid back today. Is that just, just him? Yeah, as the big gentle giant, as somebody I've become really close friends with over the last kind of 16 months, um, I think his rise to where he is now is, is unbelievable. He doesn't take himself too serious, as you said, uh, but works incredibly hard in his game and is fully deserving of his, uh, of his call up to the England squad. So, yeah, I look forward to catching up with him tomorrow. Um, obviously, we'll not be friends for 80 minutes, but after that, we'll be, we'll be back to normal. And uh, I need to try and hatch a plan to, to get him back. Brilliant. He said you're very flashy, considering you're from farming stock. Just in case he, he didn't hear that bit. Yeah, we'll, we'll let him have that. I think he just asked him about his new car. You know, he's going around in a humble car and he gets a couple of England caps and he's got the flashy cars now. So, uh, yeah, we'll leave that to him. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Stuart, um, I'm not sure what that was then, but um, you kind of spoke about leading the past in the past. Have you spoke much, you know, leading up to you know, Saturday about the... Uh, that, that massive game a couple of years ago, the free all, or you sort of left that one to bed now? Yeah, I think we can. I think if there's ever a game to, to believe in ourselves, it was probably that one. I think we knew uh, going into that game that if we didn't start right, then we were going to be on the on the end of a, a big scoreline. I think that's exactly what happened, but it showed the character, I believe, the skill set uh, that we have within the squad to come back in the second half. And as I said earlier, we can take a huge amount of confidence from that. But in terms of tomorrow, does that give us anything? Probably not, uh, because that was two years ago. We, we can't change the result. We can't you know, look at that game too much. Um, we just need to kind of focus on the first 20 minutes tomorrow and make sure that, it, that we're, we're fit and ready to go. Uh, I believe in the boys' abilities to defend, to take our opportunities and attack uh, and make this game really interesting. And obviously Finn was so prominent, wasn't he, that day? Um, and he didn't... Um... Well, wasn't too involved with the Auckland games. Must be great to have him back, and I, I get, I guess, really excited to actually get out there tomorrow and uh, and, and link up with him again. Yeah, hundred percent. I've I've loved the way that Finns came back in the camp. Obviously, and not he came back and got injured, unfortunately. But you know, the last couple of weeks he, he's been outstanding. He's really coached the boys around the park. Um, he spoke incredibly well in huddles and meetings, and really driven standards around the place. So no, I'm absolutely delighted to have a, a guy like that back, um, and I believe that he. He's got one of the best kicking games in world rugby uh, and hopefully tomorrow he can get his uh, bag of tricks out and, uh, and cause England some damage.